All right. All right. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome to episode number 404, 404. <laughs> nice. Resource not found, but don't worry. The Daily Cyber Threat Briefing is found, so it's not a true 404 server response. Welcome to Monday, July 10th, 2023. This is the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Gerald Dozier, and over the next 45 minutes, me, you, Brian White, Space Tacos, Mono Julian, I hope, Marcus Seiler, Jenny Housley, BSEC in the house, and so many other of the Simply Cyber community and squad, just like you, Greg Casey, are going to be ripping apart the top cyber news stories of the day, and I'll be giving my expert opinion and analysis on each of those stories and what it means to you as a practitioner. So if you're looking to break into the industry, we got you covered. If you're actively in the industry, you know dang well how critically important it is to stay current on what's going on in our industry. So that's what we're doing today and every single weekday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Hopefully the audios are coming through correct. I had to modify some stuff this morning, but it looks like we're green across the board. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to remind everybody that we're going to go through these stories. I have not seen these stories. I don't know what's coming across. I see the little ticker at the bottom. That's about the same amount of information that I have that you have. So no prep work. Uh, this is raw hot takes coming at you every single weekday morning. Guys, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I had a good one. We had a little bit of a, a major issue um, right before the stream started. I'll just give you a little teaser look here. This French press. This thing broke right here, my handle. But don't don't send the fire department. I do have like 1940 style oven mitts to hold my French press. So the show must go on. Now, before we get into the show, before we get into the stream, let me say holla, 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 and thank you very much to the stream sponsors for allowing me to show up every single morning at 8 a.m. Eastern and deliver this hot stream to you. Starting with my good friend, Eric Taylor, who is in chat, by the way. So do say hi to Eric Taylor, or if you're a squad member, don't be shy. Get into that Barricade Cyber Solutions logo emote in the emote tray. Barricade Cyber Solutions is dedicated to helping businesses from cyber attacks and recover from the damage done. Cyber attacks can cause massive issues for businesses and send dedicated, hardworking business owners into turmoil, giving them tummy troubles. But Barricade Cyber Solutions knows how to mitigate the damage done by cyber incidents. Believe that they will kick a mud hole in a cyber incident and set you up for success. Don't go it alone, guys. Don't be a, don't be shell shocked. Don't look like a deer in the headlights. If you're getting smacked around by a cyber threat actor and you don't know what to do, you know, be be real with yourself and call in the people who can help you. Barricade Cybers is definitely one of those. Barricade Cyber with a 50 drop. Ah! All right, so as if Barricade Cyber wasn't awesome enough, Eric Taylor covering for me when I'm out. Eric Taylor dropping knowledge bombs in chat. Barricade Cyber sponsoring the stream since I can remember. Now, Barricade Cyber dropping a 50 bomb. So if you're in chat right now, let that goodness wash over you and definitely make the first emote that you drop as a new squad member the Barricade Cyber Solutions logo. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you so much, Barricade Cyber Solutions. Links in the description below. Also want to say shout out and love. Oh, God, I keep forgetting to add anti-siphon to the uh, show prep stuff. Guys, anti-siphon training, you can see their logo right here in the top middle by my forehead. Um, arguably my five head in this picture, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, anti-siphon training, the training arm of Black Hills Information Security is delivering a plethora of different types of uh, cybersecurity training, whether you're offensive, not meaning your, your body odor or your, your breath or anything or your demeanor at parties. If you're offensive, meaning you help businesses find vulnerabilities before bad guys do, they've got training. If you're defensive, SOC analyst, 
malware analysts, digital forensics, they got you. If you're just looking to figure out what the hell is going on in our industry, how do you get started? They got you covered, especially with their three sets of skills, getting started in cybersecurity with Black Hills Information Security, uh, active deception and cyber defense. All of these courses, the one, the last couple I mentioned are John Strand's courses and they are pay what you can. If you want to learn more about one of the best training, like it, it's not really a platform as much as it's like a, a collection. It's like going to like Blockbuster Video. Hey, hey, you, you youngs, listen, back in the day, we didn't have Netflix. We had to like physically go to where the Netflix store was and look at the videos and then sometimes they didn't even have all the videos you wanted because it was a new release and you're like come on i just want to watch jumanji and like oh it's all taken out Ugh, right or like the re-release of the star wars movies whatever your poison is anti-siphon on demand and in person check it out links in the description below if you want to grab up some training i love 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 anti-siphon training also want to say shout out to Panopsi, but I've decided Panopsi will be the mid-roll advertisement today. So don't sweat that. Want to remind everybody that each episode of the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing is worth half a CPE. Ashley Sweeney coming in with a CYSA plus passing. Hold on. This is it. Yes, Ashley. Way to crush it. Yeah, well, BSEC, we could talk jaw jacking about blockbuster games versus videos. I was never a big fan of the blockbuster game situation. Like, I, I felt like, you know, two days was never enough. Like, you just end up with late fees to the point where you should have bought the game in the first place. All right, good job, Ashley Sweeney. Guys, every episode of the Cyber Threat Briefing podcast is worth half a CPE, so don't be shy. Be sure to say what's up in chat. Hashtag Team Live, Pursuit of Bliss, saying congrats. Whatever it is, take a screenshot, file it away if you ever get audited. But just know, uh, two and a half CPEs a week, 10 a month. Document literally the easiest and I would argue the most enjoyable way to get CPEs bar none. If you're live in chat, we got 187 of you beautiful people coming in here on a wet Monday morning. Where I am, it's raining pretty hard. Um, Maybe you had a long weekend. Maybe you took the whole week off last week because there was a holiday week. And you're kind of like, oh, just one more cup of coffee till I really check my email. We welcome you, hashtag team live into chat. If you are watching on replay because you just slept in, you hit the snooze and you're like, you know what I'm not doing? The cyber de threat briefing this morning. Hit us with a team replay in chat. Definitely appreciate that. If you are... Um, if this is your first time here, and I never can keep my eyes on chat to see it, but if this is your first time here, hashtag first timer in chat. I love uh, meeting the first timers. And uh, if you're a passive observer, hashtag passive observer. If you're a little shy, uh, <laughs> Siri Shami's at work. Very cool. If you're a little shy, uh, just say hashtag passive observer and step into the light of networking. Reminder, it is Monday, which is Callan's Art of the Week. So we got uh, art at the mid-roll. Also, we've got the Simply Cyber Community Challenge to touch on. Mono Julian hopefully can pass the baton. We got a lot of great stuff to go through, but let's get into the news. Glory Crespo with the first time. What's up, Glory? Good to see you. All right. Holy crap. Christian R with a first timer. Arsenio with a first timer. Holy mackerel. Dropping, dropping multiple wows. Very cool. Well, welcome to the stream. Let's not let uh, Crespo and uh, Christian and Glory, let's not let them down. Okay, guys, let's, uh, let's welcome them and uh, let's have a good show. Let's get into it. It's cybersecurity headlines. It's Monday, July 10th, 2023. New Big Head ransomware displays fake Windows update alert. This recently emerged ransomware strain may be spreading through malvertising that promotes fake Windows updates and Microsoft Word installers. Two samples of the malware were initially analyzed by Fortinet and on Friday, Trend Micro published a technical report on Big Head that claims that both these variants and a third that they sample originate from a single operator who is likely experimenting with different approaches to optimize their attacks. Big Head Ransomware is a .NET binary that installs three AES-encrypted files on a target system. One is used to propagate the malware, another is for Telegram bot communication, and the third encrypts files and can also show the user a fake Windows update. Red 
Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so <clears throat> we got another variant. <clears throat> God damn. Excuse me. We got another uh, ransomware variant in the mix. There isn't a lot. Um, it doesn't really explain what initial infection looks like. So we have to, they said malvertising. So you have to assume uh, a victim falls for some crappy ad thinking that it's actually a Zoom install or a Teams install or something like that. Uh, with malvertising, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like malvertising is... There's a lot to go, a lot goes into malvertising in order to have it be successful, right? Like on its base, 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 right? Threat actors pay um, ad, you know, systems like Google ads or something like that in order, hold on, let me do this so you can, you can see me. If you've ever gone to like a blog website and there's like ads running down the side, it's not like the blog is like, ooh, I want these ads here. No, it's like a container and then there's an advertising service that pushes there and the blog agrees to give that real estate to the advertising service in exchange for some commission or fee or whatever. It's like literally selling, it's like a billboard on the highway, right? The people on the highway who, who like the Department of Public Works, they don't control what goes on the billboard, right? It's, it's, it's this kind of ecosystem. Same kind of parable uh, or comparable um, situation. So the advertising companies, they're just getting paid for hosting stuff. So they're a little less um, thorough on vetting what is getting advertised. Now you presume that you're a threat actor, you're gonna advertise whatever. Um, <laughs> you're gonna advertise that Instagram uh, naked filter remover. You're gonna advertise free Office 365. You're gonna advertise a cracked copy. Well, you wouldn't really advertise cracked copy of software, but like whatever it is, you know, click here now to win tickets to FIFA 2028 or whatever, right? And then you get somebody to click through. And then if you've ever gone to like a crappy website where there's like buttons everywhere and you're just trying to download a copy of WinSCP or Putty and you're like, what the hell? Which one of these is a button to download and which one of these is an advertisement? That's what's going on. This is how malvertising works. And a lot of Carl's, Carl! all right, a lot of Carl's out there and uh, Christian and Glory, Carl is our avatar for uh, kind of end users who don't know any better. Like Carl's just gonna click through and if it doesn't give them the download they want, they're gonna go, go back and click through other stuff, right? And this is how victims get popped. All right, so now that we understand how this victim is getting slapped around with this thing, they're gonna install this. Now, the one thing I would say about this, uh, or the two things I would say about this, one, three things I'll say about this, Jesus, Jerry. One, you should be implementing and practicing solid ransomware, you know, protection and recovery processes, okay? It doesn't matter that Big Head is the new one on the street or it's Vice or Royal or going way back in the day to wanna cry. Like whatever it is, you should have sound protection and recovery processes in place for ransomware. Second of all, this one is using Telegram as a communication vehicle. Telegram is a very popular communication vehicle. In fact, so popular that your boy here uh, actually set up an official Telegram Simply Cyber channel. That's how popular Telegram is, that even an old like me is on the Telegram train. So if you're interested in checking your logs, I, I haven't, like Eric Taylor in Barricade uh, Cyber is in chat. Let me holler right here. Um, is it possible, like oh, what I was going to say is you should be looking on your network traffic for communication out to Telegram, right? I don't know if Telegram is a finite set of IP addresses or it's very nebulous, but if it is possible, I'd love to hear from um, SecOps people in chat. Is it possible to detect Telegram? Because the thing is, Telegram on my phone, yeah, that sucks and it won't be easy to track, but we're not worried about ransomware on my phone. We're worried about ransomware on Carl's laptop or on a, a domain controller or a file server. So you should be able to see, that would be odd. That would be really odd uh, network traffic coming from a data center uh, out to Telegram. So that's one thing I would check for. And then the second thing I would say is, and I wanna give a shout out to the threat actors. You guys know, as, as much as I hate threat actors, I do tip my hat to them from time to time on being clever. This is freaking brilliant right here. Dude, 
all of a sudden you get this well-known, well-hated um, Windows update thing with the percentages and the little circle of dots. If you saw that, you'd go get a cup of coffee, right? I know I would. Dude, right now, if my computer was like taking a crap on itself and this blue Windows update screen popped up, I'd be like, well, that's really inconvenient, but at least my computer is being updated. I'll go get a coffee and a donut or a Krala, right? Now that I'm in New England, I'll grab a Krala, okay? And in reality, it's, it's, it's getting you to walk away while it encrypts your computer. So brilliant hat tip to the threat actors. I hate you, but I do respect you. Uh, thanks, Wade Patterson. I do have a new baseball cap. Actually, remind me at jaw jacking, guys. I have a whole, I went for a run on Saturday and I came up with a whole idea that I want to share with jaw jacking people. Just remind me about jaw jacking at jaw jacking, if you could. Okay, so anyways, long story short, big heads out, uh, out there. This infographics, basic B, and uh, you should have, you know, basic processes in place. Energy, stealer as ransomware threat, targeting energy and telecom sectors. A sophisticated stealer as a ransomware threat dubbed Red Energy has been spotted in the wild targeting energy utilities, oil, gas, telecom and machinery sectors in Brazil and the Philippines. Researchers at Zscaler stated, quote, the .NET malware possesses the ability to steal information from various browsers, enabling the exfiltration of sensitive data while also incorporating different modules for carrying out ransomware activities, end quote. The objective, they noted, is to couple data theft with encryption with the goal of inflicting maximum damage to the victims. What makes it novel is the use of reputable LinkedIn pages to target victims, redirecting users clicking on the website URLs to a bogus landing page that prompts them to update their web browsers by clicking on the appropriate icon, Chrome, Edge, Firefox, or Opera. Okay. All right. I'm going to give this infographic a B, B minus. Okay, so here's the deal. This is actually a really good story, and this is really, really important to discuss, okay? For, well, first of all, just as, a, just as a cyber professional, what are we doing here? Like, stealer as a ransomware? You can't, you can't appropriate as a service... Um, monikers and just start throwing key buzzwords at the front and end of as a okay stealer as a ransomware bro i don't know who came up with that title but pump the brakes okay your marketing department and your chat gpts need to take a day off okay it's it's stealer as a ransomware okay so this malware it's not even a service like what do we do stealer as a ransomware like that's gonna bug me for like th the better part of an hour Okay, all this is it. Okay, let me walk through the attack kill chain here. Okay, and this is why it's important for um, <clears throat> yeah. How about how about meme as a foobar, right? Like I can play that game too, right? What are we doing? How about spicy or Carl as a you know wrecking ball? Like what are we doing? You can't just take two words and do that because they happen to be in there. <sighs> okay, so listen to me. This is why it's important. This attack, uh, the technical piece of this attack is a fake pop-up that says you need to update your browser, okay? So the point of victim engagement where they're going to get compromised is where they get a pop-up saying, hey, your Chrome browser is out of date and you need to update it. All this is is a malicious piece of JavaScript that is ex is going to a execute on the, um, in the, in the, space of the uh, browser and then move forward with additional infection okay two the way that they get these victims to go to these websites that they control that has this malicious, malicious javascript and this is the part i really want to focus on because it's novel is through linkedin pages okay so there's been all this talk of like malicious accounts on linkedin be careful of accounts on linkedin that typically have like beautiful women uh for the profile zero to like five followers and they're like hey um i saw your profile you're really interesting i would love to connect with you click on this link right or whatever so 
like the, you know, there's different ones too. There's like, you know, fancy business guy in a business suit. Hey, I would love to hire you based on your amazing profile. Click here, right? Whatever it is, um, they're using search engine optimization to rank high in LinkedIn's uh, algorithms. So it shows up on more potential victims pages, right? So threat actors are using LinkedIn as a uh, pool of victim potential victims and then the victims fall for it on LinkedIn. They click through. Now, LinkedIn does give you a pop-up that says you're about to leave LinkedIn. Are you sure you want to do that? And everybody clicks through it. Then you go to a malicious website. You get the pop-up. So first of all, you've had to fall. You had to fall for some type of, you know, social engineering of clicking on the link. But that's wicked easy, right? If someone tells you they got a job and they want you to look at the job wreck, who's not going to click on it if they're looking for a job, right? So you got to fall for it there. Then you get the pop-up about your browser being out of date. This is where you really need to be um, practice uh, uh, vigilance on good cyber hygiene. And this is where I would focus, y'all, for your end-user community, right? Focus on this piece because it's easy to fall for the clicks, whether it's LinkedIn today, Google tomorrow, whatever, face bigoty for your olds, whatever. You got to focus on the pop-up that says your browser's out of date. <clears throat> educate them on that piece of it. But once they do fall for it, bang, bing, bang, boom, they are getting um, malicious files sent down um, and, and data is being exfilled and then they have a ransomware payload on their machine. The fact that they're stealer as a service or stealer as a ransomware, the fact that it's stealing data and committing ransomware, bro, it's 2023. Get back to me. Like 2021's on the phone. Conti wants their playbook back. Like the data exfiltration ransomware double extortion technique has been around for years. So don't come at me with this played out fake updates JavaScript malware and talk to me about how like you're innovating, okay? That's not what's happening here. P threat actors have been stealing data and ransomwareing for years. They want to be get paid. That's the end of it. They're either going to ransomware and get paid for a ransom, or they're going to sell you your data back or sell someone else your data. You know, they're, they're the malicious JG Wentworths. It's their money, and they want it now if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Three new Move It bugs spur CISA warning as more victims report breaches. The federal government warned on Friday that three new vulnerabilities have been discovered in the MoveIt file transfer software. Progress Software released a new package of patches to resolve the three bugs labeled CVE-2023-36932, 36933, and 36934. These latest issues are the fourth, fifth, and sixth problems found in the software since May. Brett Callow, a threat analyst for MSYSOFT who has been tracking the situation, said the number of reported victims has now reached at least 230. <coughs> More than All right, so I'll touch briefly on this one. Move It was in the news quite a bit three weeks ago. Uh, John Hammond and Huntress covered it extensively uh, through a kind of an incident response and uh, how, bad, how bad is it uh, perspective. So you can definitely find a ton of data on this. A lot of big organizations were running Move It, and uh, a lot of government agencies were running Move It. Clop ransomware threat actors are the ones behind it. Want to remind you the first time ever that I have ever heard. Um, hold on, I'm just fact checking myself right now. Yeah, no, yeah, the first time I have ever heard. The United States government has put a ten million dollar bounty on. The and on information that leads to the arrest, um, or or the finding of any member of Clop ransomware. So if they had five members, you could cash in a fifty million dollar uh, lottery ticket. Okay, this never happens when uh, Darkseid, who's now Black Cat Elfie, when Darkseid hit Colonial Pipeline back in like twenty twenty, um, the federal government moved swiftly and got in there, but there was no um there was no f bounty the united states government has indictments the department of justice has indictments out for the four members five members of lazarus group you can go online and see their faces uh Revil ransomware we had their faces department of justice and in indictments out there never was there a bounty let alone 10 million dollars you want to talk about bug bounties bro bro chop you come at me with a 10 million dollar bounty that's life-changing
So obviously the national uh, U.S. government is super motivated to get these people arrested. Um, also, a question for Chad, just from a discussion perspective, if you guys want to chew on this fat for a minute. Progress's Move It software, dude, it, w it was like one bug that, that like tipped the scales and had the, the iceberg calve or the glacier calve off the main piece. But for real, it's like every week there's another massive Move It vulnerability being discovered. At what point is the software developer accountable? And I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't have a side on this. It's more of a, just a really interesting campfire at cyber nerd camp discussion. But like we, all software will be vulnerable. You cannot make invulnerable software. And that's why you can never really sue a company for vulnerabilities. But at what point is it negligence where they're not, they don't have any QC processes in place. They don't have any security testing of their applications. They don't do third party penetration before they release. At what point is it negligence? Also for the community as a fun fact, if you look at Google this, look at what the SEC, uh, the Sierra Echo Charlie SEC is doing with SolarWinds right now. SolarWinds a couple years ago got hacked by Russia and what I would consider Next to the um, Bangladeshi bank heist by Lazarus Group, the SolarWinds attack might be the most elegant, unbelievable, impactful um, cyber attack that I've ever heard of in my life. It's, it was amazing what, what Russia did in that particular attack. And now the SEC is coming after leadership at SolarWinds on behalf of shareholders that maybe they weren't. Maybe they weren't uh, taking cybersecurity seriously, so stay tuned for that. Anyways, a couple things there. Move it's kind of old news. And 42,000 people affected by ransomware attack on pro bono California law firm. The Law Foundation of Silicon Valley notified regulators in California and Maine this week that the February ransomware attack on their offices resulted in the leak of significant PII, including social security numbers, medical records, immigration numbers, digital signatures, and much more. In March, the ALF v. Black Cat Ransomware Group took credit for the attack. All right. Uh, like this. All right. I'm not going to go into terrible detail on this. Okay. Ransomware company attacked by ALF v. is definitely an equal opportunity threat actor. They don't care if you're Democrat. They don't care if you're Republican. They don't care if you're a, um, a lawyer firm. They don't care if you're a hospital or... Um, they might actually, they might care if you're a hospital. They certainly don't care if you're a manufacturing company. They, they, they love themselves to manufacturing companies. They will encrypt your data and they will get paid, period, end of story. They are a machine. Alfie is a machine. Those threat actors have one thing in mind. They get up for work, they put their pants on, they grab a cup of coffee, and they attack the crap out of anyone and everyone who may have a dollar that they can extort, period. So um, what I the what I will say though is, and I've been saying this for like, I swear to God, I've been saying this for a month. If I was a threat actor, again, I'm not a threat actor. This isn't financial advice for criminals up in here. This isn't cr like this isn't this is the simply cyber daily threat brief, not the simply cyber criminal threat brief. If I was a threat actor, bro. I would go straight for accounting firms and law firms. Set yourself up for success, right? Get their client list. Accounting firms, who's got the most money? Boom, done. Lawyer firms, who's got stuff they want to hide? Boom, done, right? You, you marry those two, you use your data science enrichment practices. Bro, you've got a, uh, you got a gold list right there. Don't do that. I just don't know why threat actors haven't done it. I'm not, I'm not, dude, I'm about, I'm about as sharp as a spoon over here. And I just came up with that. So, you know, someone else has already got that. And now a word from our sponsor, Opal. Opal is a data centric identity platform. Identity is one of the last great enterprise frontiers. It's fragmented with legacy architecture. Opal's mission is to empower enterprises to understand and calibrate access end to end. The best security teams from companies like Databricks, Figma, Blend, and Dreda use Opal to build identity security for scale. 
Learn more at opal.dev. That's O P A L dot D E V. Seriously. Uh, who said it? Um, D D D C Rash or D Crash? D Crash? Flaming Donkeys listening. Yeah. If some new threat actor emerges on the scene targeting insurance companies and uh, or law, law firms, insurance companies, and accounting firms, the uh, department, the FBI is going to be knocking on my door. They're like, we heard you're the ringleader of Flaming Donkey. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. All right. Hey, Glory, uh, Crespo, Christian, and all the other first timers here. This is what we do at mid roll. All right, everybody, it is the mid-roll. I want to thank you all for being here today. You guys make the show uh, an amazing experience. I love your chat. I love your thoughts, your comments. I love the flaming donkey. Guys, I want to thank the stream sponsors again, Barricade Cyber, Anti-Siphon Training. Links in the description. Go check them out, especially uh, Anti-Siphon if you yourself are looking for some quality training. But let's holler for a second at Panopsi. Guys, actually, before we do Panopsi, if you're here in chat, if you're a first timer, the chances are that you probably found this stream because I asked everybody in chat on Friday to click the like button. Do me a favor, if you're getting value, if you are happy with the stream, if you'd like to say, thanks, Jerry, if you want to toss a coin to your Witcher, hit the like button. It helps the algorithm know that cybersecurity people like you like this content and it will go out and tell other cybersecurity people. It's like the best way to help other people who are in our industry find Simply Cyber. So take a second, hit the like button. Want to say shout out and thanks to Panopsi. I'm so grateful to be able to have three sponsors for the stream. Panopsi Security run by Brandon Poole is an amazing information security services company that offers a host of services including a quantified risk assessment i was on stream on friday talking about how to start a grc program it was a renegade stream it's on the channel but i didn't advertise it i do that from time to time um, but if you are starting a grc program if you're responsible if you're a team of one at your company and you have no freaking idea with all due respect um, on how to start or where to go and you need a little bit of help, a quantified risk assessment is absolutely a solid home run. No business leader is gonna question the value of a quantified risk assessment. You get it done, it will give you a complete picture of your people, process, and technology and explain to you where your bi biggest risks are, what the likelihood of certain cyber incidents are so you have uh, foreshadowing or you can look into the future and see your likelihood. And then most importantly, how you can spend your vital limited resources like your time, your money, and your people in order to realize the greatest cyber risk reduction. Quantified risk assessments, they're not easy, which is why you'd hire someone to do them, but they are an unbelievably valuable. Check out Panopsi Security in chat below. Guys, I wanna um, tell everybody about the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. Every single day, we have a new member of the Simply Cyber Community, a new member, you, in chat, who takes the baton. Right now, Mono Julian has got the, um, the baton. It looks like he is not in chat right now. We'll give Mono uh, the rest of the stream, and if we don't get one, we'll pick somebody at the end of the stream, so stay tuned for that if you want to hold the baton. Basically, go on LinkedIn. You can do this right now because we've been doing it for about 75 days. Go on LinkedIn, search for the hashtag Simply Cyber Community Challenge. Read the posts that people are making, but more importantly for you, connect with the people who post and the people in the comments. You yourself should comment so the next person who's connecting with the people in comments will connect with you. We are building something here. We're building you, each individual who's listening to me right now, we're building you your own curated, real professional cyber network on LinkedIn. It will pay dividends, I promise you, in the future. So don't be shy, giddy up on that. All right, dude, every single Monday is Callan's Art of the Week. I have two sons. Every single day of the week has a special event. I have two younger sons, and or of course they're younger than me, but I have two sons. Uh, one has Friday for the joke, and one has Monday for the art. Now, Callan went a little old school, but this is Callan. This is pencil, just pencil drawing. That's me. Uh, that's me with an iPhone. That's Callan with a teddy bear. 
That's his brother driving a helicopter, apparently. There's a lot of detail hidden in here, right? We got your birds. Uh, obviously, we've got a squirrel working the, uh, the tree. We've got some acorns up in here, apples. There's a whole host of things going on. So anyways, thank you very much, Callan. Uh, we definitely enjoy your art of the week every single Monday. I love you, Callan. All right, guys. Let's slide on in and get back into the news. I'll see you guys at Jaw Jacking. Charming kitten hackers use new knock-knock malware for Mac OS. Security researchers observed a new campaign that they attribute to the Charming Kitten APT group where hackers used new knock-knock malware that targets Mac OS systems. The campaign started in May and relies on a different infection chain than previously observed, with LNK files deploying the payloads instead of the typical malicious Word documents seen in past attacks from this group. Charming Kitten is also known as APT42, or Phosphorus, and has launched at least 30 operations in 14 countries since 2015, according to Mandiant. Google has linked the threat actor to the Iranian state, and more specifically the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Holy crap, this, this, this blog post is like infographic porn. Look at how many, <laughs> look how much infographics we got. We got emails, we got uh, flow charts, we got more email, fake websites, more flow charts. They even got the little spider for the malware up in there. Another flow chart. Jesus, this is like a penthouse letter right here. Wow. All right, so Charming Kitten. Uh, using new malware. Now, a couple things going on here. One, uh, Charming Kitten, if I am not mistaken, is an Iranian-based uh, threat actor, which means to you, you can go on um, MITRE ATT&CK and look it up. But Charming Kitten, um, their targets are typically, um, I don't think, they're European, typically. They're not... Um, U.S.-based threat actors. Let me just do a fact check really quickly. Uh, Minor attack. See, this is what this is exactly what you would do if um, if you needed to do this type of work, right? And Charming Kitten isn't in here. They also go by Phosphorus. It annoys the crap out of me that they have different names, but they do. It's also not here. Oh my god. Rawr! See, the thing is, I don't want to tell you to go do something and then. When you take action on it, you can't do it. All right, here we go. Magic Hound. Here, let's do this. All right, here we go. G0059, Magic Hound, also known as Magic Kitten. Let's do this. And then you could see here is, this is, this is what you would do, right, if you wanted to get information on this. What I want to know, really, is who they are targeting. Um... They've targeted Europe, U.S., and Middle Eastern governments, military, academics, journalists, and orgs like the WHO. All right, so for me, right, I work in the United States, but I'm not uh, really working in government. I, I mean, I am in academia, but I'm not protecting data there, and I'm not a journalist, right? So you got to think, okay, like this charming kitten thing is not good, but in the pantheon of what does it mean to me, I, I Jerry, am like, okay, this is interesting, but not I don't need to spend my, my thought cycles on Charming Kitten. If you're picking up what I'm putting down. The, the whole reason I'm doing this exercise right now is just to illustrate to people in chat um, who, who are maybe aspiring practitioners or new to the industry that you don't need to treat all threat actors with the same level of seriousness. Okay, They're all serious. Charming Kitten is not somebody I'd want to meet in a dark alley, but... Like, if I'm going to spend cycles protecting my organization, I'm much more likely to think of, like, Alfie and what are their TTPs versus Charming Kitten, okay? So they're not all created equal. Next thing I want to point out, Mac OS. Again, like, I should make this a bumper sticker. Malware exists for Mac OS. Mac OS is just a Linux variant. Threat actors for years didn't really make Linux malware because there wasn't that big of a footprint. But now that CEO Debbie and, you know, CFO Carl, Carl, you know, they run Macs because they're special snowflakes. Threat actors are developing malware for it, okay? It's simple as that. It's just a computer. Um, they, are, they are sending an email. Um, I'm not going to go through this whole flow chart. This is kind of crazy, ridiculous. But 
Uh, basically, they're sending an email with an attachment of an LNK file, which is a link file, which basically will go to a website of your choice. So instead of tricking an end user, like we saw in the LinkedIn story at the beginning of clicking on something and going somewhere, you basically send them a file attachment and they click on it and it takes them somewhere. You know, all roads lead to um, you know, wherever. I don't know where. All roads lead to Malware Central, right? Next stop, Malware. Mind the, mind the gap. Right, like it doesn't matter if you get there through an email or malvertising or a dirty USB drop or whatever. Although with a dirty USB, the, the payload's probably on it. But I digress. Anyways, Charmin Kitten, get your knock knocks here. By the way, if if your first thought was a knock knock joke, like knock knock, who's there? Charmin Kitten, you know, like Charmin Kitten, who like, boo, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I just made that up. Following breach forums takedown, its replacement emerges. Less than a month after the high-profile takedown on June 23rd of the notorious cybercrime bazaar breach forums, a new version is already active, and Oleg Diorov, head of the cybercrime investigation team within Group IB's Threat Intelligence Unit, says, quote, it is expected that more cybercriminals, old-timers, and new ones will join the new forum, which is more likely to lead to various high-profile leaks and publications and sales of various databases, end quote. The FBI arrested Connor Fitzpatrick, the alleged administrator of the original breach forums, in March at his family home in New York, months before seizing the site's infrastructure. As soon as Fitzpatrick was in custody, a flurry of forums, new and old, jostled for position, leading to rival operators hacking into competitors' forums and leaking user databases. 39. Okay. Okay, here's the deal. I'm like spitting on my mic. All right, here's the deal. Breach forums, dark web marketplaces, underground whatever. For any dark web website that is designed to be essentially a marketplace, whether you're selling, you know, fulls with a Z, whether you're sending, selling credit cards, whether you're selling hacked software, whether it's data breaches, initial access brokers, I don't care. Pick your product. Whenever one of these things gets taken down by Interpol, Europol, FBI, seized domains, whatever it is, I don't care what it is. Whenever it goes down, the infrastructure comes down and maybe they take down the head of the business, okay? And maybe a couple ringleaders, whatever. Here's the deal, guys. This is this is this is a tale as old as time. And by the way, my hat and heart go out to law enforcement. Regulators! Mauna. Because it law enforcement a has a, um, you know, it's almost like information security. Like, you can never win. It's just keep fighting the good fight. Practice vigilance. You know, go to bed each night knowing that you helped do a little bit more that day. Here's the deal. Every time one of these forums gets taken down, you got to remember, like, there's a million, like, there's money to be made there. There's clearly a market talking basic, basic economics, supply and demand, guys. This is economics 101, supply and demand. There is clearly a demand for this service. So when you take out the service, there's a vacuum, and other people are going to fall in line in order to provide that service because Great cash, homie. they're going to make money. That's all there is to it. If you want another comparison, look at Twitter and threads. People are so grossed out and unhappy with Twitter. Mastodon didn't scratch the itch because the interface is kind of janky. Threads comes out, and they have 100 million users in three days. Do you think that that's a coincidence? It's not. It's supply and demand. People, The people want it, right? The same thing with these breach forums. There's too much money to be made. It's too much of an incentive. There's too much of a guaranteed demand there. And by the way, if you're a threat actor, like what are you going to do? Like say you're a felon, a criminal. You work, you live in a, 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 a war-torn Eastern European city that, you know, the Russian UK Ukrainian conflict just rolled through and destroyed your businesses and stuff. You can't get a job, or maybe you can at a bakery and you make minimum wage or you make just enough to like put food on your table. You look at this. And the dude who's getting arrested is driving like a Bentley or sitting in the back of a Maybach, eating caviar, like d using disposable clothes because they don't they don't wash their clothes because they just buy new clothes every day. You see what I'm saying? 
it is too enticing. It's too, you know, appetizing to not happen. So anytime a, a form gets broken down, it, another one's going to pop up. Anytime these criminal marketplaces go down, another one's going to pop up. And, and I would say that making the leaders um, an example, it, it, it's, it's not enough because there's just so much freaking money in it. Look at, um, look at the guy who started Silk Road. Is it, uh, Ul 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 Ulrich's Scott Ulrich's or, or, uh, whoever did Silk Road. I'm getting the name a little jack jacked up. He's an American out of Texas, but the dude's in jail for life. And people are like, Ooh, yeah, that sucks. But I'm not, it it's, it's worth the risk. I'm not going to get caught. Right. I think it's Ulrich. Anyways, like we're never going to get rid of these things unless the penalty is like, unless here's the deal. The only way that this is ever going to go away is if we implement like Judge Dredd, okay, <laughs> which I'm not all about. I'm not interested in, in like a Judge Dredd type dystopia. I'm just saying even life in prison isn't uh, motivating enough to stop these guys from filling the vacuum nearly instantly. Ross Ulbrich, thank you. Percent of businesses faced a cloud environment data breach last year. A new cloud security report from Talis shows that more than a third, 39% of businesses have experienced a data breach in their cloud environment last year, an increase on the 35% reported in 2022. In addition, human error was reported as the leading cause of cloud data breaches by over half, 55% of those surveyed. Three quarters of businesses said that more than 40% of data stored in the cloud is classified as sensitive, compared to 49% of businesses this time last year. More than a third ranked software as a service applications as the leading target for hackers, closely followed by cloud based storage. Of course, okay. <clears throat> Here's the deal we are in this like nexus of. <sighs> okay, think about this for a second. Right now, businesses are like all about running and leveraging the cloud, right, for services. Vendors are quick to spin up whatever cloud services they possibly can because it's quick, easy, fast, and they can start going to market and selling stuff instantly. So you have this perfect storm of moving quickly <clears throat> with what I would consider minimal oversight from a cybersecurity perspective, all right? Hey, we're out like in a lot of business leaders, and I've seen this from experience, and if you've seen this on your side, Hashtag preach and chat. The business side sees it as, hey, we can get this service for pennies on the dollar and security is their problem, right? We'll put our data in Dropbox. We'll put our data in Google. We'll put our data in, you know, Epic EHR system or, or you know, whatever. And they'll secure it. It's their responsibility. It's like, it's like loaning it's like putting your kid in daycare and being like, well, the daycare is going to protect my kid. Okay. Yes. But you're also assuming that they have vetted their staff at the daycare place, that they lock the door at the daycare place, that they actually watch the children the entire time at the daycare place, that they don't have sharp knives laying around at the daycare place. You see what I'm saying? You make a lot of assumptions when you say, oh, they'll take, they secure it. Okay. And this happens all the time, which is why, Frankly, I got to tell you, when I saw this headline, I thought this number was actually low. 39% of businesses faced a cloud environment data breach last year. 39%? Here's a fun fact. 100% of businesses are using cloud services right now. That isn't even hyperbolic. And I'm willing, excuse me, I'm willing to go on a limb here and say 100%, unless you're some like mom and pop candy store. And even then you're probably using QuickBooks bro. Okay. So I bet you a hundred percent, um, are using cloud and I get, I guarantee you a higher number than 39%. My, my argument here would be that only 39% know that they suffered a data breach. And then there's some other Delta that don't know that they, uh, suffered a data breach. Just be mindful guys. You know, those third party risk questionnaires, yes, they're annoying and they take up time and they're crap, but if you're not going to take action on the results of those third-party questionnaires, then just just don't do them, right? Have a plan. Have a plan. Have it spelled out in writing that they need to notify you. Have it spelled out in writing that they'll destroy your data when you end the relationship. 
Get it in writing. Nickelodeon probes claims of massive data leak as SpongeBob fans rejoice. Nickelodeon says it is probing claims that decades-old material was stolen from it and leaked online. This follows reports on social media that someone had dumped 500 gigabytes of snatched animation files. Hilarity and many SpongeBob SquarePants memes ensued. A spokesperson from Nickelodeon confirmed that they are aware of the social media posts that allege the theft and are investigating. They confirm also that the alleged leak content appears related to production files and not employee or user data. If the material is genuine, it would include never-released TV shows and scripts belonging to the animation department. All right, so I saw this come across my feed over the weekend. Two things. One, I I heard that Nickelodeon is going on a rampage. Well, it says rampage somewhere in here, right? Rampage. But I, I heard that they're freaking out, like threatening anyone and everyone that if you release any unreleased Nickelodeon content like video or script, more the shows, uh, they will sue the, you to the moon. Okay? I heard that. What what I what I found interesting when I saw this is like when you think of Nickelodeon, you think of like kind of goofy, campy kid shows. You think of Green Slime. You don't think of a team of lawyers who are like suing your pants off. Um, I'll be interested to see what happens. It just goes to show you that every company, real like you know, with some exceptions, but most companies have sensitive data, intellectual property data with value. And they need to protect it. Uh, we'll see how this data leak thing comes out. I didn't hear about the SpongeBob, um, you know, contingent moving on this. But um, just as a fun fact, a little tidbits Tuesday on Monday. Uh, Nickelodeon, I remember when, like, Nickelodeon came on air. You can't do that on television if you want to take it really back. Alistair, the, you know, the beginning of the green slime. Barf, I think, was the chef's name. It was like the first kids like skit comedy. I remember that. Also, shout out to Finders Keepers, uh, a g kids game show that was uh, before its time. And then obviously Double Dare. Used to have like a joke going in college that I was Mark Summers' younger brother. <laughs> We'd go to a party and introduce like they'd be like, oh shit, like they'd be my friends, but they'd be like, holy crap, you see that? That's Mark Summers' younger brother, Scott. That <laughs> would be Scott Summers, aka Cyclops, but no one really caught that part. All right, let's keep. We're taking a week off from our Super Cyber Friday conversation. All right, that is that. Hey, really quickly, let me do this. Guys, if you were here just for the news, uh, I appreciate that. Before you boogie out of here, I want to tell you two things. One, Simply Cyber does have an official Telegram channel that you can giddy up on right now. If you're interested in, you know, it's basically all the things you see here. Naham Sec, TCM, Eric Capuano, any blog posts they release come into the feed. If NIST or CISA release any advisories or updates, they come in. Black Hills, I love what they do, so talking news drops in there. Obviously, if Simply Cyber has something like this threat briefing, you'll be made aware. And then uh, Bleeping Computer, I am open to feedback, so if you're um, if you're interested in helping, you know, make the Telegram channel better for whatever in any capacity, let me know. Uh, it's a service I'm providing. You don't have to pay anything. It's just I use Telegram all the time, so I wanted a, a Simply Cyber channel. So let me know. You can go to uh, this link right here. I'll put it in chat. For the official Telegram channel, let me just confirm that that's going to uh, do this. Yeah, see, you'll get this if you click on that. And you'll go into Telegram. 229 awesome people are already in there. So don't be shy. Also want to remind everybody, later today at 4 p.m. Um, at 4 p.m., I will be doing a live hack-along. So if you want to, if you don't know what CTFs are, if you've heard of them but been intimidated, if you want to learn how you can use uh, cyber ranges to practice your skills, learn your skills, but you're a little intimidated, at 4 p.m. today on the Haiku Pro platform, I will be live streaming live, obviously, um, a walkthrough of a very basic CTF range that's designed to teach you how to use CTF ranges. 
It's absolutely free, so you can jump on the range with me. So you can have me on one screen, and you can have the range on your screen, and you can literally watch me do it, and then you can do it on the on your screen and, and like feel it and, and understand how to work it. It's basically like an instructor lunch an instructor run lab for zero dollars at 4 p.m. today. If you're interested, come hang out. At a minimum, come hang out. I, I'll play music and, and you know, do more of this. Um, so that's always good. All right, guys, uh, really quickly, the um, it looks like Mono Julian did not make it to, um, to the stream. But I wanted to give a, a shout out. Hey, is Matt Kiley in, in chat? Is Husky Hacks up in here? Let me know if Matt Kiley's in here. The the Appalachian Trail guy. The PMAC guy. All right. Yes, the hack along will be recorded, Jamelia. All right, so let me do the Simply Cyber uh, baton pass over. Um, let me see. All right, hey, is David Meese in chat? David Meese, are you in chat, my friend? I want to pass the baton. Fit for life, what's the problem? Hold on, was fit for life? Hold on, what was the order? Hold on, we have an audit log, fit for life. Let's check this out. We do have an audit log to track these things. And this is why we this is why we have audit logs. Stay stand by. Let's check the receipts here. All right, so when did be Hold on, when did Hold on. When did Be Fit for Life get tagged? Be Fit for Life. When did you get tagged? Hold on, Be Fit for Life didn't get tagged. He won the um, he won the um, THM thing, right? The try hack me. Yeah. So Be Fit for Life, do me a favor, connect with me on Discord or LinkedIn. Just just message me on LinkedIn, right? DMs are open, and tell me your Be Fit for Life, and we'll get you sorted out. Okay? It's obviously an oversight that David didn't get you the uh, your prize. Okay. Exactly, Chad Green. We got the receipts. Okay, all right, so I'll, I'll look at... All right, so hold on. Let me take a note. Be fit for life. It gets written down in my action item log here. Ooh, it's getting done. Here we go. Here we go. It's getting written down. Be fit for life. THM. All right, my friend. We'll get you sorted out in no time at all. All right, so did we get a... Um, did we get... Is David Meese in chat or is Matt Kiley in chat? Oh, Emilio Garcia, we're going to be talking jaw jacking at jaw jack, and I've got a cool idea that came to me. Have a good one, Shane. All right, it looks like we might have to might have to throw it up before I randomly choose somebody. Is there somebody in chat who would in uh, enjoy the opportunity to carry the baton for the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. First one to respond, happy to pass the baton to you while I pour a cup of French roast. Have a good one, Cyber Munchkin. Let's go, Nick. There it is. Let's go, Nick's got the baton. Be fit for life is on the uh, is on the uh, list. All right, see you guys. See you, Brian. All right, so let's go, Nick. Can you accept the baton? All right, so let's go, Nick. Jenny, Jenny Housley. Let's go, Nick. Is officially uh, accepted the baton. Let's go, Nick. Go on LinkedIn. Uh, post your cyber why. Hashtag simply cyber community challenge and um, connect with. Uh, let's go, Nick. In chat, everybody. Okay, guys, so let me share a couple things with you. One, 
Um, I, I hope everybody got the newsletter this morning. I saw it come in. I haven't read it yet. Um, Kimberly had suggested last week that I color, um, like highlight the, the support the newsletter section, which is basically a hyperlink that you can click on. And it'll basically, um, <laughs> it goes to a blog, but Simply Cyber gets like a dollar for every click. So we're trying to like crowdfund the newsletter uh, annual platform fees, which is $1,100. So if you got the newsletter, let me know. I picked the blog post that that link goes to. So I think it's a good one. It was a top 10 list of things to tell your end users to keep them cyber hygiene clean. Um, so let me know about that. All right, so here's the deal. Jaw jacking on jaw jacking. So by the way, if you were here just for the news, thank you very much. At this point, I'm gonna pivot the show into jaw jacking, which is basically just kind of a hangout social. I always check my calendar to make sure that I'm not gonna be late for something because I typically, uh, it's not uncommon for me to just like blow off a 9 a.m. meeting because I'm a donkey. Uh, I do not have a meeting, which is all right. Okay, guys, check it out. Hey, Jaya. Oh, thanks for the newsletter. I don't know of anyone higher in GRC right now, Jaya, but there's certainly a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Hey, whoever said that? Uh, Boban? Boban? Boban Milosevic? Definitely get that LinkedIn updated. Uh, so, yes, I've been using threads. I like threads. I hope other people are on threads. I'm Gerald Dozier, Simply Cyber on threads. The one thing about threads that stinks right now is um, there's no hashtags and there's no searchability. So when you open threads, it's like basically walking into like, um, it's like walking into a brand new mall or it's like going to the first day of school at, at, at like a new school. You have no idea like, where to go, who, what you're into, what people are talking about. Like, it's just a yard sale of messages. Like I, I, I opened threads last night and it was like people like venting and flipping out about some type of like, oh, that person totally deserved it. Oh no, she's mentally unstable. That's not fair. Ugh. Like it was like a hot heat map. Um, it, but I, I didn't know what the hell they were talking about or who they were talking about or what they were talking about. So, like, there's stuff like that. I think it's an alpha MVP of threads. I don't think that Meta expected the level of adoption that they got so quickly. But hopefully on the product roadmap, they have enough um, things planned. They, they absolutely need hashtags and they absolutely need discoverability. I do want to say shout out to this guy. Uh, there's the midnight, obviously the midnight. Um, M Taggart, MT Taggart, he actually posted this thing, InfoSec Gang Roll Up, because we can't find each other on the platform yet. He did this, and a bunch of people commented, including myself, like, hey, I'm Jerry, I talk about InfoSec, I also love running. You know what I mean? So, like, it's, it's, this is like a kind of a organic way of trying to connect with other cyber people in order to have your feet a little bit more cybery. Uh, so, I don't know, get at it. All right, guys, let me tell you about jaw jacking and jaw jacking. And um, I'm going to start a poll. Ready? Do you like the new jaw jacking idea? All right, do not vote. Do not vote on this until I tell you. Like, don't vote on this until I explain what, what it is, okay? So here's what I was thinking. We do the daily thread. Stop. I'm not. I haven't even told you what it is yet. I haven't told you what it is. People. Listen, here's my here's my idea. OK, we do the show from eight to nine. Basically, I tried to keep it to 45 minutes, but it's eight to nine. OK, then we have been doing nine to nine thirty jaw jacking. OK. I haven't, I haven't been shy or uh, d discreet about this. I am really trying to go m more full time with Simply Cyber. Okay, I've got the courses; those certainly help pay the bills. I've got the sponsorships; those certainly help pay the bills. Um, but I would love to go more full time. Now, it, it, if that happens, when that happens. Um, I have some ideas, but here's the idea for jaw jacking, okay? I would like to do the daily cyber threat brief from 8 to 9 a.m. Eastern time. 
then from 9 to 9.30, I want to have a different show, like a separate stream for jaw jacking. And we, we can come up with the, the names, but maybe call it like si just chatting or cyber water cooler talk or whatever. But basically, I would set it up so when I end the threat briefing stream, it automatically pushes all the YouTube people into the jaw jacking stream. And, and I would, you know, I'll put a baseball cap on or whatever. And it'll be a completely dedicated 30 minute AMA jaw jacking BS. Talk about whatever we want, stories that we just covered, the, the you know, upcoming conferences, whatever. But it would be a 30 minute dedicated chill show. And that way, people who are listening on the audio podcast for the daily threat briefing, they wouldn't have to carve off that extra 30 minutes. People who wanted to uh, be focused just on jaw jacking could just come to jaw jacking. Um, it would be consistent. Some days I end the stream and just leave. Some days I do 30 minutes. If I have the time, I would just do, I would just do a 30 minute show on jaw jacking. Now on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the fall and spring, I wouldn't be able to do jaw jacking Tuesdays and Thursdays. So maybe it's only Monday, Wednesday, Friday, dedicated jaw jacks. But, and, and then, and then, um, um, you know, I can have separate sponsors for jaw jacking. Um, uh, Cat GPT had mentioned potentially in introducing new membership roles, almost like a Patreon, in order to sponsor the jaw jacking, like, you know, like premium uh, platinum sponsorship for jaw jacking, where like your names roll across the bottom. I haven't worked out all the details. I'm, I'm doing the big, broad brush strokes right now, but the question that I want you to answer in chat, yes or no, do you like the idea of a completely separated jaw jacking stream that is, you know, it's it's focused on the jaw jacking and then we could start playing with the jaw jacking thing, right? I can have a different overlay. I can have a different look and feel. We can do different stuff with the music. I can play regular songs and get copyright strikes all over the place. And then the, da the daily threat briefing won't have the copyright strikes. Although if you haven't noticed, I stopped monetizing the daily threat briefing like months ago because um, I didn't notice a, a, a change in, in performance, so. All right, so let now that I've asked everybody, let me watch chat and see what people say. Jesse says he likes it because it creates in, intentionality around jaw jacking. Yep, jaw jacking with Jerry, thank you. People like it, Alsa likes it, Bill likes it. IDK, get the well-deserved bag. Does that mean money, IDK? I don't know what that means. All right, people seem to really like this. Uh, 81 of you, 85 of you. I mean, this is, um, I've never seen a vote go so definitively one way. Not one dissension in the, in the, oh, it means getting paid? Okay, cool. Yeah, so Aaron KG, well, Aaron KG. Do copyright strikes, can that result in a shadow ban? I don't know. Joel Bellin's Ice Cream Shop sponsored the new half hour. <laughs> yeah, Jim. Yeah, I haven't thought about starting a new sim uh, a new YouTube channel. That would be interesting. I haven't considered that. It's a lot of work maintaining one YouTube channel. Um, all right. Thank you, McKinday. Get that money, Akil. Yeah. I will tell you guys, and hopefully this comes across. Yes, Simply Cyber. Uh, does generate revenue. Many of you are squad members, which is obviously um, a contribution, a donation you're making. I'm very transparent about that, but the, the, the funds do fund the show and fund me and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully will enable me to serve this community in a more full-time capacity if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Have a good day, Tim McDonald. Great to see you. Would give some time to network with less pressure for some. That's right, Jonathan Knock. Actually, with jaw jacking, I mean, we could even do like fun games and fun. We could do like it's it's it's, it's deliberately informal, whereas the daily cyber threat brief is deliberately more formal. Even though I lose my mind from time to time, so I think the division would would uh, you know set a tone at the top of what expected behavior is, which would be more informal and chill, right? It would be the threads <laughs> of podcasts. Thanks, Jose Alfredo. Hashtag Team Live. Aja Boy Ebenezer. Good to see you. 
All right, scripting kitty likes it. Guys, how many votes we got? Have a good one, Lazaro. 100 votes, 100% yes. All right, I'm going to call it. We'll do it. We'll do a dedicated jawjacking segment. Era J8, is a CS degree good in security? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have two computer science degrees. Nerd alert! Nerd alert! I think my computer science degree has served me well in my information security career. Thanks, Space Tacos. Oh, William Welch, good point. William Welch is saying use Discord during jawjacking. That's a fantastic idea. Guys, this is why I love the Simply Cyber community. You guys are so creative and so smart. I will do that, William Welch. We did the Discord on April Fool's Day, and it was hilarious. I, I barely could keep coffee not coming out my nose. Um, but I, I will, I'll set up a separate overlay, and it'll be me chat it with discord and that's it i might even do that overlay this week so jamie fleck with discord you can use animated gifs and it's freaking hilarious in fact i might even be able to do it right now you guys want to play for just a minute hold on let me see if we can show jamie what's up uh i i have no idea if this is gonna work y'all where is it hold on one second All right, hold on. H hold on one second. Oh, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, no, no promises on how this is gonna look. All right, hold on, hold on. Go to the live stream chat on the Discord on the Discord server if you want to play around for a second. This is just gonna be kind of fun. I don't normally do this, but what the heck? Why not? I can't make it smaller. Um, hmm. How can I do this? Hold on one second, guys. I can't really, like, oops. I'm, like, screwing my overlays now. If you go, hold on. If you go to, uh, sorry, I'm not even looking at chat right now. All right, I, I can't really, whatever, but you can do this. This is what this is what you can do and why it's freaking hilarious. Oh my God, hold on. Here we go. This is why. <laughs> Give me some Tina. <laughs> this is why Jamie Fleck. This is why. This would be jaw jacking. Yeah, so so all right. So William Walsh, thank you very much. We will I will have a dedicated overlay for jaw jack and we might even start <laughs> We might start this sooner than later. Oh my god, this might start this week in a in a very uh in a very um in a very um informal capacity but this is brilliant oh my god this is good all right all right it's decided let them let the meeting minutes show that we will be doing a dedicated jaw jacking segment with discord chat oh my god holy crap this is funny thank you jamie for asking why discord <laughs> Oh my god, I'm like sweating. It's so funny. All right. All right, guys. I might even try to do this in a very crude fashion for tomorrow. 
Okay, so look look for um, a jawjacking live stream posting tomorrow. I can do private stream for members only as well. That's true. CSA PK on. Oh, hey, hashtag first timer, Sarah. Good to have you. All right, so let's we'll take it under advisement. Aaron KG is suggesting that this could uh, pollute the Simply Cyber um, channel, uh, which is okay. Uh, let me let me let me talk to Aaron and figure out the best practice. Maybe I create another channel, just called I, I don't know. It's a big deal. Like when you start a channel, it's not like you can do it flippantly and then like oh like change it you know, a month later. It's like you're already all in. All right. Holy crap. You guys are so funny. I love it. All right. Let me do back to this. All right, guys. Thank you all so much uh, for being here today. It's 920. Let me let you go. Um, this has been episode number 404. Podcast not available. LOL. John Bruno coming to us live from bed. Nice, John. I'd say... Have it when it's scheduled and then just unload it or unlist it. Yeah, that's a good point. We could do that too. Holy crap. Cuda? Josh McAdore said that my GRC course was the best one that anyone... Holy crap. That's high praise, dude. Where? Hey, can you tell me where he said that? I would love to capture that. Holy macro. I'd love to email Josh and tell him, holla. <sighs> cool. I love Josh McAdoo. That guy is really awesome. I should have that guy on um Simply Cyber Live. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks Space Tacos. I'll check it out. Uh and I'll I'll I'll, I'll message him. Be fit for life. I'm going to try to circle up with you right after the stream. Guys, thank you so very much. A, a ton of fun. Um, stay tuned for the jawjacking thing. William Welch, thanks for the suggestion of the Discord chat. Jamie, thanks for the asking why Discord so we could have that fun experience today. Jawjacking's good time. Cyber threat briefing's a good time. Cybersecurity is all about good times. Guys, be good. And until later today at 4 p.m., I hope you can join me for the follow along. It's going to be uh, a good time. And I'll just tell everybody the range that we're going to be doing is free always. So even if you can't be there today, um, you'll be able to watch the stream and follow along at any point. That range is free. Sometimes the ranges are made free just during my stream. But this range that we're doing today, Haiku 101, is free all the time. So be mindful of that. All right, guys. I'm Jerry, your Simply Cyber community. Thanks, everybody, for being here. You're the best. Have a great Monday, and we'll see you at 4 p.m. Cheers. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed that content. Keep the cybersecurity train going by connecting with the other Simply Cyber community resources. We have the Discord server that's lively and always keeps the conversation going. You can connect with me directly on LinkedIn. And also, every single weekday morning on the Simply Cyber channel, we're doing live daily cyber threat briefings, 8 a.m. Eastern time, as well as Thursday at 4.30 p.m. We're doing live stream interviews with industry experts, and we produce videos that we push out every Wednesday morning. I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber. I hope you enjoyed the content, and we'll see you in the next one. One.